Here's the thing, um, Adam. Adam brings up a good point. It's all by design, 100%. But what I'm kind of noticing when I look at the way that the CLE is set up, they're not just they're not just focusing on AT and T. Like in my, this is just personal personal opinion. You're not getting, you know, I'm I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. But the way that I see the Verizon millimeter wave node for fixed wireless access, it's cable like. It's not fiber like. You know, we toss these words around. It's important that we make sure we frame it properly. Fiber is fiber. There's no negotiating, right? It's going to be gigabit up and down. In the current state of 5G, even with millimeter wave, we're restricted to LT as the anchor, so we can't get the uplink. So if anything, Verizon's millimeter wave fixed wireless access is more cable-like. So it's going to be more like a Comcast connection. You know, it's not going to be more, it's not going to be like a fiber connection. So it's, it's more like Cox, where they're going to give you, you know, 500 down and 30 up. You know, it's going to be something more like along those lines. Now, the, once we get standalone services and there's more spectrum on the network and we're aggregating millimeter wave and C band, now we're going to start seeing multi gig on the down and we could start seeing the four and five hundreds on the up. Moose, I'd say we're probably a couple years out, though. That's a conversation we're probably having in 2023. I mean, the well, remember, um, and it's still not really competing with fiber, even if it's getting three, four hundred right. up, you know, because fiber at that point, I think commercially and residential, we'll be seeing gigabit speed as a standard. I mean, remember what we were talking about last year, uh, you know, in uh, the summertime. We got some sources at Qualcomm that they were testing the X60 modem, right? And that was able to carry or aggregate multi NR, sorry, yeah, NR standalone bands. So I'm anticipating that this year in this, you know, third uh, quarter, fourth quarter, several bands will be migrated more spectrum to standalone 5G. Mm-hmm. One of them we talked about, you talked about it recently with me. Band two, PCS, 1900 megahertz. I think you are very dead on on what's going to happen there. Um, The second one could be another low band, band five in areas that have band five for both Verizon and AT&T. Band 66 is popping up in places as well, right? And 66. So we can theorize it all day, but we can guarantee that the combinations are going to be N77 C band plus a slightly lower band, N2, N5, and another mid-band potentially, N66. You know? Yeah, if we can if we could start to see more millimeter wave dedicated to uplink, mm-hmm. now it changes everything. Right. Right, we've connected to those before, and we've seen 200 megabits per second. But on sites where it's just using LT as the anchor, that's not the case, right? We're seeing right. 30, 40, 80... 80 is pretty much the max. I think I've seen 100 a couple of times. I've gotten 200 once or twice. You know, it's fiber's still the end game. But in places where fiber needs a competitor, I like fixed wireless through ultra wideband. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, hey, what if, what if, um, what if something happens? You have the Verizon millimeter wave ultra wideband fixed wireless. Something happens. They mess up your billing, and I don't know. You get mad and you want a new provider. And AT and T's in the building with fiber, you switch. One hundred percent. You know, like it's good to have those options. So I'm not here, like, trying to tell you here's what you need to get. No, I'm trying to tell you is that there are going to be options for you in the future. 